up guys, uh, Heat King here, bringing you some new Resident Evil 9 rumors slash leaks and details. So, this stuff just went up on Reddit, and it's on Twitter apparently as well. Before I continue, remember to like and subscribe please. And yeah, what what a good day, honestly. Well, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty much been a decent day. I have not been decent, okay? I've been getting sick and ill 24-7 here and there. So I'm still, I'm, 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 I'm in recovery again. But this was a good thing to sort of close the day on with, uh, with a supposed leak about RE9. Um, apparently these are details from a German leaker and he says 100% that RE9 will star both Jill and Leon. Now, of course, this is considered a rumor, so take it with a grain of salt, as always. Remember that. Before I do continue, uh, I do want to say what a disappointment the uh, Summer Game Fest was. We didn't get anything in State of Play, and we didn't get anything at Summer Fest, which is very unusual for Capcom. They broke the pattern. They broke the pattern, guys. Resident Evil 7, 2, 8, and 4 were all revealed in June events. But this was the one time, this was the first time in, in, in those four consecutive years, consecutive years, where they failed to show an RE game. So, when is the next game going to be revealed? I don't know. It, it, it's clearly obvious that Dust Gollum's info about the game being delayed might have actually been true. At this point, I'm considering the fact that RE0 is more likely to be revealed next over RE9 for the simple fact that uh, the rumoured side team is working on it and they tend to make their games very quick. So, I, I guess we're going to get some sort of PS showcase or another state of play towards the end of the year and that's when we're going to get some info on RE9. Otherwise, I don't know. Like, I wasn't expecting this. I was so positive we would get something in June. I was, I remember, I was right when when RE4 remake was gonna come, was gonna be revealed. I was like, we're gonna get, we're, it's, we're gonna get the reveal at, at this state of play, and it happened. But this time around, I was completely wrong. So, I mean, when when you when you do it four out of, do you mean four out of five? It's still not bad, right? But still, uh, yeah. My bad, guys. My bad. And yeah, it's just what's going on, right? But let's read for this. Let's read for this and figure what's going on. Okay. So, this information comes from a German leaker who is apparently very reliable according to the people who follow him. Uh, his name is Andy from Screamfire Germany. According to Dos Gollum, Andy, who Dos Gollum only referred to as a foreign leaker, was actually the first person to have leaked the RE0 and RE called Veronica remakes months before Dos Gollum and IGN even commented on them. Ah, so this guy is is one of the legit ones it seems. His source is apparently a Capcom employee that he became good friends with at a Gamescon event. See, I need to go to more of these uh, game events and become friends with some of these people then and maybe maybe I can start getting leaks. <laughs> that would be the dream. Um, all of the following information comes from a stream on YouTube which has been translated from ex newser Sapphire Weapons Charred Remains. Uh, I think the X account is at Agony Crossbow. Sapphire has also been compiling multiple leaks and rumors regarding the Resident Evil franchise. So if you're interested in that, it's worth checking out their page for more information. Here's their page if you're interested. Yeah, there's a link there if you want to go and check it out. Uh, the translated information from the stream is as follows. So here we go, guys. Let's read what this what this leaker has to say. Uh, some of it is good. Some of it is... Some of it is unexpectedly, ooh, you're going to be disappointed, but we'll go, go for it one by one. Says RE9 stars Leon and Jill, not just Leon. Okay, so Leon and Jill are going to be the main characters. This feels very re reminiscent of RE8. When the first leaks for RE8 came out, they said it was going to star Leon and Jill. That was bogus, obviously. But Leon and Jill, I, I, I feel like it kind of makes sense because... Leon's been on this sort of popular rise now thanks to RE2 Remake and RE4 Remake and Jill she's been sidelined for a long time now and yeah she had a moment in RE3 Remake but that game didn't you know it, it, it wasn't received very well but they did bring her back as sort of the main character basically in the Resident Evil Death Island movie and we did get that first meeting between Joe and Leon in that film and that was great that interaction was great and the interactions of all the characters was pretty great it's a pretty great film actually I think like it, it's what a lot of us as fans 
for her wanted to see, like seeing sort of the core four interacting together. And we got that and it was great. But a whole game starring Leon and Jill, that 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 would be pretty good. That would be sweet. But uh, let's continue on. Jill is apparently to Leon what Shiva is to Chris in RE5. So yeah, that pretty much tells me she's the secondary main character then. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, game is not fully open world, just has open world elements like RE Village and RE4 Remake. Yeah, again, that's sort of, it's what I, I, it's what I considered. A lot of people were like, oh, this is, this is going to be massive. It's going to be open world, how it's going to be. And it's like, mm, it's probably going to be similar to what the previous games did, or even something like the Evil Within 2, where you got this big hub area and you're just sort of going through it. Um, a lot of a lot of RE4 remake and Resident Evil, and Resident Evil Village uh, did have these big areas that you could go back and forth and revisit. So, uh, well, specific locations to be honest. But um, if it's designed like that, yeah, I was never expecting an open world in, 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 in the guise of oh, I'm going to be able to drive a car around this area and that. Like, I don't, I don't think it was ever, it was ever going to be anything designed like that. Just it was probably just going to be a bigger game with the sense or the illusion of oh yeah, this is going to be a big map you're going to explore like. Uh, game was initially designed as a co-op game, but after the positive reception to RE7 and RE Village being single player, Capcom may have cut the co-op aspect. That for me doesn't make a lot of sense, uh, and I'll explain why. RE7 was inspired by RE1, slash the classic era of Resident Evil games. RE8 was inspired by RE4, slash the sort of action realm of video, uh, era of video of the RE games. RE9 for me would make sense to be co-op. Like, plus, it would make sense to have that be an action game as well, especially if it's going to have Leon and Jill in it, because those characters, they're, they're, they're action heroes now, they're superheroes, like, they're, st scary stuff doesn't scare them anymore, does that make sense? Like, like you look at Death Island, and it's not it's not, it's not a horror film, it's, it's an action film, like, if you're going to have those characters in there, you can't, you, the fear factor isn't going to work with those characters, if that makes sense, does that make sense? So... Uh, having it not be Cobb is just kind of weird as well, like, especially if you're going to be doing RE5 Remake, it, it feels like RE9 would sort of be the pursuer to that, but then, then again, apparently they're doing RE0 and Cobb Veronica next, so maybe RE10 is going to be the co-op game, I don't know, that one, that one's a bit weird for me, I don't mind it if it's single player, but like, I'm, I'm just hoping that the game is able to balance between Leon and Jill, and if, if it, uh, maybe it's, maybe it's an RE2, RE1 situation where you get to choose who you want to play as, do you know what I mean? Uh, when considering cutting the co-op, Capcom also considered cutting Jill as well to just focus on Leon and the single player. However, after reducing Jill's role so much in RE5, they felt it was unfair to cut her again. Says he knows 100% that Jill is still in the game as a main character. He's just not sure where she stands from a gameplay perspective. Capcom really does not like Jill, in my opinion. Like, um... It's crazy to say that, but like it, 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 it just feels like I don't know. It, 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 I don't know how I don't know what to really think about on this here. It, it, it just feels sort of like they keep insulting her. The fact is, they I mean, if this is true, they are saying they did consider. You know, they did say it, it, they're very much admitting they screwed up with RE five in in terms of reducing role, which just which. If this is legit, it pretty much confirms that Joe had a much bigger role in RE five that they cut out. If you get the RE five art book you'll find a lot of the deleted uh, levels, concepts, and that. And a lot of that was actually renewed for Resident Evil 6, uh, Damnation, and Revelations 1. Especially Resident Evil 6. A lot of the deleted levels and concepts were taken and put into Resident Evil 6. But Jill was supposed to have a bigger role. She was supposed to join Chris and Sheva uh, and, and, and accompany them, but they but they decided they, they didn't want to do that for some reason. I, I guess maybe that's when the DLC idea came in their heads and they were like, you know what? Let's let's not have her do this. Let's not have her be there. Let's let's use this as an opportunity to, to use her as DLC and sell that instead. But apparently she was supposed to be like a big part of the third act, accompanying Joe and uh, Chris and Sheva and help out in the final battle against Wesker. So yeah, I mean, if you're going to bring Joe back, you can't just sideline her. And Death Island did such a good job with her as well. It's like, come on. Don't don't screw up like you already did. Like, make Jill a, a, a big character again. I mean, and he's saying he doesn't know where she stands from a gameplay perspective. I mean, he's saying, he's first he's saying that she's basically the Sheva uh, 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 to Leon's Chris. So that tells me she's a secondary playable character. But then now he's saying that he, he he's not sure where she stands from a gameplay perspective. You Dude, you just said she was going to be... Um, she was going to be a secondary main character. Now you're saying you don't know what's going on. 
Uh, uh, mentioned that if it is still co-op, he's not sure how Capcom is designing it. Says it could be like RE5 and RE6 or like RE0 where you could freely switch between them or may just end up being two separate campaigns for each character. I like the RE0 aspect of this. Hear me out. Early rumors for Cold Veronica Remake, uh, there, there was a leak last year that pretty much said that Ori Cold Veronica was going to be designed similar to Ori Zero in where you could switch between Claire and Steven. And Ori Zero was the first game to introduce that concept and it was never really brought, actually it was brought back, it was brought back in Revelations uh, 2 where you could switch between, uh, you know, the characters that you were playing as, you know, if you, were, if you were playing as Claire, you were also playing as Moira, and if you were playing Barry's campaign, you were playing, you were switching between Barry and uh, Natalia, so they did bring that concept back. I'm wondering if this is true, if that leak for Core Veronica was true, if maybe, maybe Capcom is considering the idea of having those three Pacific games have a similar control feature to them where you switch between characters so with zero obviously it's it's the it's the original you're switching between rebecca and billy and with cole ronica you're, you're going to be able to switch between claire and steven and then with resident evil 9 you're going to be able to switch between leon and jill which means both of them would basically be together for most of the campaign and duration in terms of it being co-op it could work technically it could work it's just Hmm, it's just, it, you know, from the very beginning when the game starts, you're going to have those characters be together, that's the thing. Um, uh, doesn't know who the game supporting characters are, but suspects it's most likely Barry for Jill and Ada for Leon. Hmm, that's, that's an interesting uh, thing to say. He, he says he doesn't know, but he suspects. If you don't know, why would you suspect... And Barry for Jill and Ada for Leon. Okay, Ada makes sense. Yes, if Leon's going to be in the game, Ada's 100% going to be behind there. Especially if the rumors are true that it's going to take place in sort of like South a in a South Asia sea. Like, why, you know, that's a good opportunity to have Ada included and maybe finally explore her backstory. Maybe, you know, fingers crossed. Barry for Jill, I would expect it to be Chris maybe, but, you know, I mean, if you want to tie Ori 7 and 8... Uh, to RE9, it would make sense to have, bring Chris back and maybe have Chris be Jill's uh, supporting role, especially since Chris has pretty much been a main support role in 7 and 8, so why not continue that, right? Like, have him be the main background character. Um, I don't mind if it's Barry, but if Barry's coming back, he's gonna be, and this is, you know, you have to keep in mind what year this game takes place in. If it takes place in 2024 or 2025, He's going to be 64, 65 years old. I, I guess he's still old enough to kick ass. But that also makes me wonder, if Barry is a big part of this game, does this mean that the main villain is going to be Natalia slash Alex Wesker, perhaps? Because I find it weird that you would bring Barry back and not continue that loose end. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like that would be tied heavily to his character if you're going to bring him back. Says RE9 will not focus on Blue Umbrella and likely not on the BSA cliffhanger from the end of Village either. If the BSA cliffhanger is addressed, it will only be a small part of the game. I can actually see this being true and the reason for this is very simple. When the DLC for RE8 was announced, uh, uh, the, you know, the producers or directors for that confirmed that they had two ideas for the DLC. The first idea was Chris versus the BSA and continuing that cliffhanger from the end of RE8's ending, or doing uh, or doing the epilogue storyline with Rosemary Winters and closing off the Winters storyline for good. And they chose to do Rosemary. So that tells me that there was no plan to continue the Chris storyline with RE9 from the beginning. Because if that was considered for DLC, that means it was never considered for a main game, which means that RE9 from the get-go never was going to continue with the Chris stuff. Uh, and plus, if, again, if this game's taking place in 2024, 20, 2025, 20, it's going to be like a, a few years after the events of RE8, so Chris surely would have dealt with that already. And if Chris is not the main character of this game and he's not in it, I don't see why they would continue that. Personally, I'm hoping that's not the case. I'm hoping that maybe they, they've moved the plot to this game somewhat in the background and we still get like a tie into the connections and the BSA somewhat. Maybe even because if Jill's in it, she's a BSA member. If Jill's in it, surely there has to be some sort of tie in, some sliver of tie in there. Or maybe we get a file or something that reveals that Chris dealt with it and then we'll eventually get like a side game that explores that storyline or maybe a, a, a movie that takes place after Death Island that, you know, takes place after Aria and deals with that, maybe. I don't know, uh, but 
uh, I would I would tell I would say not to get your hopes up because it feels like we're not going to be continuing that uh, plot line unfortunately, which is a bloody shame. A uh, game will be third person, but he suspects that first person will be added later to the game, similar to the Evil Within two. I call BS on this, and the, again the reason for that is simple. Just checking if it's recording. Uh, I feel like RE8 uh, Gold Edition or, or, or the DLC they released for that uh, was basically a stepping stone in terms of them deciding whether they wanted to or not implement both camera angles. So in my opinion, RE9, when it releases, it's going to have both camera angles. You're going to be able to choose to play the game in first person or third person. You're going to get a choice and I feel like that's what's going to happen here. Uh, that... Or, or, or they give you two different campaigns, and one campaign is first person with that character, and then the other campaign is third person with that character. I don't know, maybe maybe they play around like that. But, if, but I don't think this is going to be a patch or anything. I feel like this is going to be something that's going to be in the game from day one. So, yeah. Um, thinks the enemies are zombies, but they'll be faster and likely more aggressive since the slow, lumbering zombies wouldn't be a threat to Jill or Leon anymore. So like I said again, Leon and Jill, they're, they're professionals, they're superheroes now. You know, they're not going to get scared of a bunch of zombies anymore. And if you're going to if you're gonna do zombies, you're going to have to, uh, you know, make them more vicious and aggressive. And, and going sort of like the 28 weeks, 28 days later route just makes a lot more sense, doesn't it? So having them be faster and aggressive, similar to Crimson Heads, perhaps would be more ideal but again uh, apparently the leaker thinks zombies are the enemies he, he doesn't actually know so he also provided interesting info regarding the franchise as a whole hmm. okay so let's read this stuff this is important he said that the only characters who are safe from death are Chris, Jill, Leon, and Claire. Anybody else, including Barry, Rebecca, and even Ada, could all be killed off if the story calls for it. He suspects that could be part of the reason why Barry might appear in RE9. Due to his age, his window of being used is limited, so it's possible Capcom may want to give him one final appearance before closing off his story. So, that doesn't necessarily confirm Barry's gonna die. If he does show up, it doesn't necessarily confirm he's gonna die. It's just a case of they might want to close off his story. But this is another reason why I feel like if you're gonna bring Barry back, maybe it makes sense to bring Natalia, Alex Wesco back as well. Uh, and have her be the villain as well, maybe. Like, and that, that can tie Barry to the story. Otherwise, it's a bit weird to bring Barry back and then, and then, and then, and then he dies. And then that storyline is just sort of left as a loose end. Do you know what I mean? Because then... What's going to happen to that? Like, I, I always imagine if they ever bring Natalia back, right, that Barry would be heavily involved in the storyline. I mean, that, those were the those were the rumors for Resident Evil Outrage back in the day. If you guys remember, apparently that game was supposed to be set in a university starring Rebecca Chambers and Natalia and, and, and side characters. The rumors were varied. You know, some said Jill was going to be a side character. Others said Ada. Others said Leon. And others said Barry. And for me, that just made a lot of sense because if Natalia is in it, then Barry would surely be in it as well. So... Uh, but yeah, as for them not, and uh, as for Chris, Jill, Leon, and Claire being safe, yeah, that makes that makes sense. Chris is obviously safe. We know he's safe because of the RE8 epilogue. Jill, they just brought her back and they revealed that she can age young now. Like that she she ages slower now, so yeah, she's safe. Leon and Claire, I don't know. I feel like if they wanted to, they could kill one of those two off if they wanted. But uh, they're they're like popular characters. So I don't think that's ever gonna happen, unfortunately. So this is this is one of the annoying ones here. RE5 Remake was in pre-production but was ultimately shelved, not cancelled, until Capcom could figure out how to handle the racist controversy. Okay, first off, that's BS. There is no racist controversy. The, the, the people who scream racism for this game are, in my opinion, racist themselves, okay? Anyone who played RE5 and said it was racist can go, can honestly go and, and just, you know, shove off to the end of the world. RE5 is not racist. That BS iJoint article that came out a few months, like a few months ago, back in March, that can go and, uh, and shove itself. Dust Gollum, when he made that entire post about RE5 being racist, literally last year in March, he can go and shove himself. RE5 is not racist. When you've got a bunch of black people who played the game and they say it's one of their favorite games or that they liked it and they, they didn't consider it racist, it's not racist. It's like me, an Iranian, right, uh, playing Splinter Cell Blacklist and saying, oh, this game's racist because it features a level set in Tehran where we're killing a bunch of Iranian soldiers. It's racist. It's like, it's set in Iran. Like, what, what kind of people do you think you're going to find there? Like, I'm not offended. 
So why why are and, and, and pardon for this, but why why do you appear white people always find the need to be offended for other cultures and ethnicities? It's like deal with your own goddamn problems and leave us alone, right? Like fuck off. Like seriously, fuck off. Like, I, I hate that shit. And I don't think this is true either because of the simple fact that it always made sense to me that Capcom would remake, you know, either Ori 1 remake or or, or, or Ori do an Ori Corotica remake before doing Ori 5 remake because you need to set up the Chris and Wesker rivalry first. New fans are going to go into Ori 5 Remake without having played those games, and they're going to be wondering, why the hell do these two hate each other so much? What is the beef? What is the history? And that's why you need a remake for Cold Veronica the most, but also maybe another remake for Ori 1, just to, to give it that to give that gameplay uh, element to it with the RE engine because a lot of people I'm assuming would not have played the original remake or the port that came out a few years ago. So this this part just feels like BS to me. It's also something I've heard before a few weeks ago as well. I don't know, this might have been the same person, but uh, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, if Capcom is smart, they would do Cold Veronica first. It's just common sense. Um, so yeah, this is BS to me. Uh, says that Capcom put out a call for an RE6 remake, but nobody had any interest in the project, so it was cancelled and will likely never happen. See, that for me is BS as well, because, uh, and that's something I've heard as well again. See, the, 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 I get it, the game, the game is sort of the black sheep of the RE series, but so is RE0. And RE Code Veronica has its own share of problems that, that the remake is going to have to sort of do because there, there's certain things that I can easily see people crying and bitching about like oh you can't do this now in this day and age so I can see that if they're remaking that they're, they're obviously gonna deal with those issues and the and the fact that they're doing RE0 as well if they're doing RE0 and Cold Veronica they're 100% gonna do RE6 it was one of their most highest selling Resident Evil games the game literally sold a million copies on the Nintendo Switch Okay, this was recent. Okay, they did they updated the summary and it sold a million copies on Nintendo Switch alone. The game is still selling. It's still selling. Same with RE5. If there's such a big controversy, why are the ports still selling for these games? So this whole nonsense, oh, there's a contra is, is bullshit. There is no controversy. It's just a bunch of white privileged arseholes, you know, making these uh, rant articles and, and fanning the flames just to get the, their little subs and views uh, across, when in reality, they don't know shit and, about this franchise and they're not fans of it, okay? They're just using it as an excuse to get to get rich or get money off it or, or, or have their shitty ideas heard. Like, no. If, 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 if RE0 and Cold Veronica and, and, and in the end RE5 get remakes, RE6 is getting a remake, 100%. Do I think it needs to be completely overhauled? Yes, 100%. But it's definitely going to get a remake. You're not you're not going to remake all the other games and then sit there and go, yeah, we're just going to leave RE6 alone. Like, no, that's not fucking happening. You're remaking it. End of story. Also mentioned that each team director isn't bound by the story or cliffhangers that came in the previous game. They can tell whatever story they want to and use the characters what they want. This is why there are so many unresolved cliffhangers and characters that are introduced and never seen again. Yeah, I can believe this. The only reason RE8 did what it did is because uh, the writer and director of RE8 was the writer of RE7. So, that guy obviously wanted to continue the story, So and, and it happened. I'm going to be very curious to see who the writer and director of RE9 is. Um, fun fact. Hell was that? I thought that was my cat, but he's, he's, he's in my room. That was scary. Fun fact. Um, see, now I forgot. Fun fact. Uh, the Resident Evil 6 director was the guy who directed Resident Evil Outbreak File 2. The guy who directed uh, Resident Evil Revelations 1 ended up directing Resident Evil 7. Uh, like I already said, the guy who directed Resident Evil 8 wrote uh, Resident Evil 7 and wrote RE8 as well. And the director of RE4 Remake was the director of Revelations 2. So I think it's just fun to know these little details and it, and it sort of gives you an idea of what to expect from the game when you know who the next director kind of is. But uh, yeah, just, just throwing that out there. But um, yeah, it kind of makes sense why we don't get a lot of continuation of storylines in that. I imagine if this doesn't continue the connection storyline, 
we're going to see it continued in RE10 perhaps and have and Chris is probably going to show up in that game instead. But that's kind of what they do, isn't it? I mean, look what happened with RE4 and then and then the jump from RE4 to RE5. You know, RE4 didn't really have anything to do with any ex with coexisting storylines, and then RE5 continued the plot. That, that 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 sort of was set up in Ari called Ronica. So it, it, it tends to happen. It's just a case of you have to wait a few years to see those loose ends tied up. Like uh, Also said that seeing these newly introduced characters like Shevo or Helena, he mentioned, are, un are unlikely to make an appearance again. Yeah, it, a lot of people are always saying, oh, I want to see these characters again. It's not happening. Those characters, I think, are never coming back. Chris, Jill... Uh, Barry, Rebecca, Leon, Claire, Sherry, and Ada are pretty much sort of like the core eight characters that have pretty much appeared in in, in, in games or or appeared again after uh, after missing for a few years. Characters like Carlos, Nikolai, um, Billy, Helena. I think even Jake at this point can be added. Uh, uh, and other characters like uh, you know those characters I don't think are ever going to come back, which is a shame because I feel like the, you could make you could make some good side RE content with those characters. Like imagine imagine an RE game set in South America starring Carlos, that would be pretty cool, or an RE game set in Africa again starring Billy and Sheva or Josh, like that would be pretty cool as well to see. Um, Nikolai, we still don't know whether he's dead or alive. That's always been ambiguous. Hank. Like, he is just sort of this mini character now, like, who shows up in the mini games here and there. Like, the Capcom's just totally forgotten him. We don't even know if, if he was the main character of Umbrella Corpse or not. Like, <laughs> don't know what's going on there. Um, Parker returned in the manga, in a manga in Heavenly Island, but that's about it. And most of the characters in Revelations 1 did sort of have an epilogue to sort of close off their storyline. So, you don't really need to see them back. We don't need to see Keith. Or Quint, was it? Like, or a Bride, for example. Like, the characters are just sort of God. Um, uh, Jessica and Raymond. Yeah, I would like to see what happened with them. I mean, we know they were working for Tricell, but that, that's about it. Like, we don't know what else they did, and Tricell went under, so what are they doing? Honestly, the only characters, like, I do really want to see come back are, are Billy, Carlos, Jake, and Natalia. Like, those are the only characters I really want to see come back. The rest I don't really care about. Like, like Sheva not coming back makes sense because she's part of the BSA African branch. Uh, same with Josh. Helena, like, her story had a beginning, middle, and end in RE6. We don't need to, we don't really need to see her return. Um, characters like Ashley. Again, it would be cool if they did come back and they're an agent now, but again, not really necessary, is it? Uh, so, yeah, it just, it, it makes sense, it makes sense, you've got your core characters and that's it, so, it sucks, but it is what it is. He also says that he tries to be transparent with what he knows and doesn't know in regard to leaking. I don't really get what that means, like, I mean, a lot of the stuff he said is stuff that he thinks is gonna happen, and some stuff that he will show up and isn't show up. This, this entire leak is, feels very 50-50, to be honest, like, nothing's really confirmed or revealed. 100%. Uh, here's a link to the stream if anyone here is fluent in German and would be interested in watching it. I actually have, like, somewhat. I know the basics. I was born in Germany, by the way, so I would I know the basics of it, but uh, <laughs> I'd probably find it a bit difficult to understand everything. Um, in addition, there's also another streamer by the name of Bakbasup, Bakbasup who also claims to have some knowledge of Resident Evil 9 as well, and is pretty adamant that Jill is the main character and that it is an open world game. He mentions this in nearly every stream he does for Resident Evil and has been saying this for about a year now. Here's a link to the video of Buck Basoops mentioning Jill is the main character of RE9 and of being an open world game. And yeah, there's a link there for that if you're interested. So uh, yeah, overall, what do I think of this? Uh... Again, it's 50-50, guys. At this point, I think it's safe to say that Leon is most likely coming back. But I think it's also safe to say that keep our expectations low for what supporting characters are going to return. I would love it if Jill's in it. I would love it if Barry and Ada showed up. But I will, I most certainly would love it if Chris shows up and we get a continuation of the connection storyline. But at this point, I'm thinking, nah. Uh, I, I just want to see where the game is now at this point. Like, But... 
I'm also I have to accept the fact that we're not going to get a, a like a continuation of the storyline, which is kind of annoying because it it means it means we're getting something new again, and that we're going to have to wait a few more years to see whether those loose ends are picked up or not. Plus, I also want to see what those remakes are. So, but yeah, that's that, guys. That's that. I hope you liked it. Uh, as always, remember to like and subscribe, uh, and I shall see you when I shall see you. And yeah, I'm just. I'm just curious when the next big PlayStation event's going to be. At this point, I'm thinking it is going to be... There's a rumored PlayStation Showcase rumored in September. We might get something then, but... That's a good few weeks away. We got we got Gamescom to look forward to in August, but I don't think we're going to get anything there. I don't, I don't think Capcom ever does anything big at Gamescom of all places. Like, so I wouldn't expect it. Tokyo Game Show, maybe, maybe. It's a big if. Could happen. Uh, but, yeah, I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Uh, at this point, they, they're really just focused on Monster Hunter, I guess. But I really want to know what RE9 is about. Like, what's going on with that? Why was it delayed? Like, what's going on? Like, come on. Like, give us the details, man. Give us the details. But, uh, yeah, guys, hope you like that. And, yeah, take care and bye.